Say Let's go to Jonathan positive. Krinsky. I'm glad you're here. Um, your, your work is so useful at times like this. What is it telling you about a bottom? So last time we were on the show back August 6th was a very similar situation. And what we said then, it's a fluid situation. Whenever you have these type of extreme downside capitulations, you know that a bottom is in hand. You just don't know if it's the bottom. Markets bottom either two ways, a V bottom or they go back and retest the low. So at this point, the volume we saw on Friday, the indicators we saw, only 3% of the S&P is above its 50-day moving average. Those are capitulatory signals that suggest a bounce should happen. It's just a matter of monitoring the bounce to see whether that's it or whether we're going to come back later down the road and retest. Josh Brown, what are you watching? You have Apple up better than 6% today. You had an uh, interesting and somewhat provocative tweet that we can show everybody. Uh, here's a test of whether or not you're a certified gangster. Apple's dividend yield and the interest rate on a 10-year U.S. Treasury bond are now identical, 1.17%. You have 20-year money to put to work. Choose your fighter. What do you mean? What's that? Is anyone hearing that? I don't know what that oh. is. All right. I thought that was you. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, let me speak from personal experience. We managed money for 850 households. Last week, we only had one client send an email, sell all my stocks. Um, this was an eight-figure account. Talked them off the ledge within 15 minutes. Um, and then while we were on that call, three more calls came in from other clients, which were, how fast can I get money to you? I want to invest more right now. This is what I've been waiting for. So um, you could take that in two ways. You could say that indicates complacency and people still think every bounce is a V. Or you could say people are learning the lessons that most of the time when you go down 5 or 10 percent, it doesn't mean the market's about to be cut in half. That's actually historically not what usually follows a 5 or 10 percent pullback. And people are learning that over time. It, regardless of how you take that, the big message is in crazy tapes like this, Activity is not always required. You don't have to have the strongest opinion in the room about whether or not we'll see more um, confirmed cases, whether or not travel will be completely shut down for the next three months. You can have a view. You don't have to express that with your money. And I think as people become more comfortable with this idea that anything can happen from here, um, in a very strange counterintuitive way, it's almost freeing. It allows them to say, OK, I understand that I have no handle on what's about to happen. Is my allocation appropriate for what my long-term goals are? And when you come back to that question, do you buy Apple? Do you not buy Apple? These are tough questions. And you may be wrong. You may be right. But I think having the right allocation, understanding that the range of probabilities is very wide, I do think you get to a better psychological place than if you're the person running around saying, I, I got to do something and I better not screw this up. Shannon, what are you advising people to do? I think as it relates to the, to the tape today, I think um, I, I agree. I think we could see, you know, we're, we're certainly going to see some sort of snapback here, whether it's sustained and or whether we, you know, test another another low over the next couple of weeks. I think it's important to look at what's happening in China. I think it's important to look at the reaction of Chinese stocks to what's happened. Um, they have bottomed and, and rallied uh, significantly uh, over the past few weeks as it seems like we are hitting an inflection point of uh, new cases in China. You look at, you know, to Josh's point, if you look at the manufacturing numbers out of China, they're abysmal. And so to look forward over the next 9 to 12 months and sort of try to extrapolate where you think that means global GDP goes is really difficult. And so if you came into this year and you were uh, feeling like there was going to be a mid-cycle mid inflection in growth and halfway through the year, you're probably not seeing that. Um, I would say you want to sort of shy away from this value rotation uh, narrative that we came into the year with, and you're probably going back to those quality growth names, which I think is what's going to continue to drive the tape higher here today and over the next couple of days. People going back to those companies that are still continuing to grow on the top line, despite what they feel will happen in the economy over the back half of the year. Pretty remarkable to see Apple up 20 bucks. Did anyone uh, think the Chinese numbers would be non-abysmal? Was anyone like, this is going to look great? Well, did anybody think, think the Chinese government? Did anybody I mean, think the Chinese government wouldn't go to the insurance companies and say buy stocks, help support this market? Does anybody think? Week. Does anybody think that they can do that in the U.S.? No. So as I said in my note this morning, that I like the market in six hours, I like it in six months. It's in between that I don't know where it is. Yeah, Mike Santoli, you've been looking over the last 24 hours at the anatomy of a correction, if you will. What do you make of the action? Uh, it's 
I mean, it's encouraging. I do think you can say it's at least plausible that, you know, Friday morning's lows look like they could be, uh, at least on a tactical basis, uh, the low for a little while. But that doesn't mean you can really make a declaration here. I think open-mindedness matters. Uh, if somebody came to you and said, uh, you know, Dow's going to be down, you know, 2,600 points in, uh, in nine days, you wouldn't think it was necessarily good things going on. That's where we are right now after, uh, after this bounce. So I think you definitely got, as everybody is saying, extremely stretched. And it's encouraging, at least, that the market has responded in this way to severely, historically oversold conditions. And uh, the question is, is this just kind of relieve those conditions and give you another chance to back away or not? And I, I do think there's a way you can say, look, by the way, I would be the first one to say the playbook says it should be a, a, a retest. They're going to chop around for a while, go sideways. Maybe those lows are not safe around 28.50 in the S&P. But the, the, the Christmas Eve 2018 low so far, and we're over a year into it, was never retested. In fact, never even came close. So I don't think you can necessarily say this is exactly how it has to be scripted. Um, uh, but just kind of, I think, take it as it comes. I don't know. What's interesting is not a lot changed about the character of the market coming into today growth versus value was basically still at an all-time high you did not have a lot of churn in terms of what the market was trying to tell you is everything came down at once uh, and and you you sort of had this reset of, uh, of psychology as well as price which, which leads me to you Tom Lee um, who said the other day the market is quote not normal but yet you're looking for a what you say is a v-shaped bounce yes um, you know I think that a lot of these guys already talked about, Jonathan talked about the internals collapsing for the market. We had six days where the market was down over 8%. It's only happened 10 times since World War II. And if the PMIs hold above 50, which it did on today's print, 100% of the time you're higher, 3, 6, 12 months later. Average gains 27%. So we're looking at potentially 3,600 by the end of the year for the S&P, even though we've actually collapsed below year-to-date levels. That's such a tough call to make given the <laughs> environment we're in now, 3,600 by the end of the year on the S&P. Yeah. Yes, because if you once we get through the worst of the hump, which I'm not saying there is because Steve brought up some good data points, cost of debt is 1%. Investment grade yields are 2.5. Companies' cost of borrowing has fallen. Stocks got to the dividend yield that's almost the same as bonds, which hasn't happened in 70 years. But fiscal stimulus plus lower cost of debt means PEs go up. I think we could have massive PE expansion. What do you assume, this. what are you carrying for your S&P earnings this year? Well, so tw by the end of this year, we really need to look at 2021 earnings. And I don't think... But we're, we're, we're beginning of March, so sure, let's yeah, that's right. the So as year. we look six months ahead, markets look six months ahead. I think earnings revisions are, there's per quarter at least $3 a risk. So if it's... Three months, three quarters, it's nine dollars at least off the top of the S&P for this year. But I'm adding that back to next year, which is why earnings aren't permanently. What would disabled. change your mind? What would make you say, you know what, my original target is way out of line with reality? Um, like what would be the thing that would tip you over um, to, to reducing it? Uh, I think last week we saw stocks get annihilated. I mean, S&P looked like a big. I think chart. so, too. Yeah. So we agree. But investment grade bonds were rock solid yeah. and the yield curve steepened. So it looked like a liquidation, especially into the end of the month. If this week had followed through and investment grade and high yield were falling apart and the VIX went beyond. So credit, so credit spreads are important to you. Credit leads equity. Do you think that they're a valuable signal given how much liquidity there is in the market and how much people are chasing anything with a positive yield? Do you think they're still useful? I mean, there's distortions. I think the distortion really in the last few months, maybe more in the equity, because as Krinsky was telling me off camera, you know, calls really seem to have affected equities. But CEO visibility is not bad. I mean, I, I did a lot of reality checks. It's, there is hysteria in the market, but the, the company visibility isn't as bad. I mean,